So I want to do a little video here about where we use a 3-2 directional control valve in both pneumatics and hydraulics. Now, I think I have some videos that touch on this topic uh, in different ways, but this one I wanted to be a little bit more direct with. So here's what I have. So I have the most common way to control a single acting actuator. This can be a motor, cylinders, spring actuated cylinders or weight or gravity uh, actu uh, actuated cylinders. Um, it can be uh, um, vacuums. It can be a number of different types of actuators out there. So I wanted to kind of talk to you about these a little bit. Now, by far, single acting actuators are much, much more common in pneumatics. In my experience now there are probably people out there who will tell you that tell me that i'm wrong which is totally fine but that's just my experience so here's an example of a three two directional control valve so when i activate this i'll turn this on when i activate this air comes out extends it the spring returns it now that spring can be a lot of different things it may just be the uh, rotation of the motor coming to an end there may be a mechanical break on that motor um, it can be a vacuum again so many different things and again very much more common in pneumatics than in hydraulics now where it gets a little crazy is when you want to control a single acting actuator in a hydraulic system now single acting actuators are not nearly as common in hydraulics as they are in pneumatics especially on the cylinder side Okay, they, they, they exist, they're, they're definitely there. But typically hydraulics are attached to something that's so hard that we like to have, or so heavy, that we like to have oil flowing to it to help retract it, okay? But if there is a situation like that, here are some examples. So notice on this single acting cylinder, there's no spring in here. There are hydraulic cylinders that have springs in them. I've never seen one personally, but I, I do know they exist. They're just not very common. Typically what happens is the cylinder will extend and then gravity will retract it, okay? Gravity will retract it or some other mechanical means will bring it down or retract it, whichever way it's facing. So here's just an example. So when I activate this, I, I'll activate it. The cylinder goes up and then when I wanna retract it, there would have to be some weight here to retract that down. Now, you'll look and say, hey, that's not that's not a 3-2, that's a 4-2 directional control valve. And if you're confused on uh, three ways and four ways and um, you know position valves, I do have videos on that that I'll link at the end of the video. Uh, but this is a four, this is a four-way directional control valve. But notice that the B port here is plugged. So it's going to behave like a 3-2 directional control valve. And they do this on purpose. It is very rare to see a 3-2 directional control valve in hydraulics. It's much cheaper for the manufacturers to just make a bunch of 4-2 directional control valves and then plug the B port. Okay, this is much, much more common. So that's why this, this symbol right here, that's the symbol for blocking that. Okay, um, and so now in rare situations, you may see a 4-3 directional control valve used. This will lock this in place if it's uh, real heavy, uh, although there are some better ways to do it. Um, I haven't seen this done a lot. I think I've seen it a couple times more out of just because that was the only valve they had in stock and they had to get the machine up and running before. It's not a great look. It, it, it's definitely not recommended, but this would be a 4-3 directional control valve that they have with a closed center um, that they have converted by plugging the B port for a single acting cylinder. So if there was weight here, it would come down. Okay, so I can activate this, it will go up. This will stop it in whatever position it is in. And then if it were come to come down here, and let's just say there was a weight here, that weight would force this down and the oil would retract. OK, so that's just a little bit of the difference between thinking about controlling a single acting actuator. In my experience, single acting actuators are more common in pneumatics. Um, 
but they do exist in hydraulic. So it's good for any technician, hydraulic or pneumatic technician, to understand both of them and how they relate. And it can be a little confusing because if somebody says, hey, that single, that, that single acting cylinder, that hydraulic single acting cylinder is being controlled by a 3-2 directional control valve, and you go and you look at this and you say, oh, that's a 4-2. What the heck's going on? Or if you see a valve with one of the plugs port, typically the B port, but it can be the A port depending on the makeup of the directional control valve. So, you know, I hope this maybe cleared up a couple questions uh, that you might have about these. Again, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about directional control valves, I do have other videos on that that I, again, will be linked at the end of this video. So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.